So three videos into this series and I still love virtue ethics. The ethics which focuses upon the quality of one's character rather than upon one's obedience to one's duties or attentiveness to the consequences of one's behaviour and which I happen to think would be better suited for progressive politics than the current duty-based orthodoxy. In the first episode I answered the criticism that notions of virtue cannot tell us what we ought to do. In the previous episode I answered the accusation that virtue ethics suffers from crippling relativism, that it's so tied to the particulars of one's circumstances as to be incapable of offering universal moral instruction. In this episode I'm looking at the so-called moral look objection. Kant famously claimed that ought implies can. From this claim one can deduce the so-called control condition, basically a claim that conscious control is necessary for moral responsibility, and that people can only be reasonably praised or blamed for something they do when they could have chosen to do otherwise. Moral luck is when our natural moral attitudes conflict with the control condition. There are three ways in which this can happen. Firstly, when the control condition conflicts with our attitudes due to results or outcomes, such as when we blame negligent people more for the ensuing harm if there's an accident beyond their control than we do if they are equally negligent but there is no such accident. Whereas if we held to the control condition, the degree of condemnation should be equal in both cases. Secondly, when the control condition conflicts with our attitudes due to circumstances, such as when a civil servant who, for reasons beyond her control, works for a regime that commits genocide is judged more harshly than one who works for a regime that does not, even if it's likely that they would have both done the same thing in each other's place. Whereas again, if we held to the control condition, the degree of condemnation should be equal. And finally, and most damningly, with regards to virtue ethics, when the control condition conflicts with our attitudes due to constituting factors. As in when we praise or condemn people's character, even when they were unable to control the factors which formed it, such as their genetic inheritance, the wealth of their parents, the quality of their educational opportunities or their formative biographical experiences. Given that no one really has control over these factors, it follows that without some resolution of the moral look issue, virtue ethics fails. Virtue ethics would be plausible, despite moral luck, if we could somehow tell when to heed the control condition and reject our natural attitudes, and when to heed our attitudes and reject the control condition. That is, if we had some means as to decide when, or when not, to a. Suppress our intuitive desires to apportion praise and blame on the basis of results, circumstances, or matters of constitution that are beyond personal control, and b. Ignore the control condition and proceed to praise or blame the person regardless of results, circumstances or matters of constitution that are beyond their control. As it happens, virtue ethics is in a far better place to be able to make this decision than a strict duty-based ethics. Because virtue ethics could, in not being beholden to absolute conditionals, choose when it best serves the function of our moral institutions to go with them, and when best, by the same measure, not to. Again, I propose that an understanding of the functional roles of our various moral instincts, and the thin principles with which, under certain artificial conditions, they can be made to conflict, may be arrived at via empirical study. In conclusion then, virtue ethics can, I think, when informed by empiricism and naturalism, respond to the moral look objection. So there is, as yet, three episodes into our exploration of the criticisms of virtue ethics, nothing contrary to cogent argument in being a virtue ethicist. Which is a good thing, because it is my belief that, despite its reputation for conservatism, progressive politics would benefit from virtue ethics. Which is why, next time, I'll be tackling another objection to it. Thank you for listening.